Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. Al Sharpton and the grievous industry strike back. That is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. Last week, we told you that one of the big reasons Trayvon Martin lost his life was that George Zimmerman feared the image he projected that night in Florida, his clothing, his presence. Zimmerman profiled Martin, and disaster followed. The anger this case has engendered is understandable. If Trayvon Martin was my son, I'd be doing exactly what his parents are doing. But out of tragedy can come something positive, and that is why Talking Points is urging the civil rights folks to stop maligning the country and face up to a huge problem that is directly harming millions, primarily in the African-American community. Young black Americans are the most violent group in this country by far. The reason is the collapse of the traditional African-American family unit. Fifty years ago, when blacks had it much worse than they have it now, 25% of black babies were born out of wedlock. Today, the number is close to 75%. That is catastrophic. But the civil rights industry and the white power structure basically ignore the problem. They also ignore the entertainment industry putting out vile products aimed at young people, some of whom incorporate the gangsta culture into their own lives. On Thursday, we told you that Al Sharpton, now in business with a company that distributes garbage like Lil Wayne. While Sharpton says he's concerned with the state of black culture, his upcoming book will be marketed by a company, Cash Money Content, that debases this country. In response to my analysis, Sharpton took to the air and did what he usually does. He attacked the messenger, implying that I am racist. Why is Bill O'Reilly talking about the African-American family? It's hard to take much of this race talk seriously. I took Bill to Sylvia's restaurant in Harlem for dinner in 2007. Here's how he described it afterward. There wasn't one person in Sylvia's who was uh, screaming, mf -er, I want more iced tea. <laughs> Please. You know, I mean, it, everybody was, uh, it was like going into an Italian restaurant in an all-white suburb in the sense of people were sitting there and they were ordering and having fun and there wasn't any kind of craziness at all. Well, that sounds kind of patronizing, right? What Sharp and a number of others on MSNBC did was take the radio clip from 2007 completely out of context. Here was my setup to the Sylvia's comment, something that dishonest Sharpton would never run. Black people in this country understand that they've had a very, very tough go of it. And some of them can get past that, and some of them cannot. I, th I don't think there's a black American who hasn't had a personal insult that they've had to deal with because of the color of their skin. I don't think there's one in the country. So you got to accept that as being the truth. Does that sound anti-black to you? I continued my theme that despite racial injustice in the past, we're all Americans with much in common. And the marketplace is now reflecting that. I illustrated that point by talking about my dinner with Sharpton at Sylvia's restaurant. You know, in Sharpton, I walked in, it was like big commotion and everything, but everybody was very nice. And I couldn't get over the fact that there was no difference between Sylvia's restaurant and any other restaurant in New York City. I mean, it was, a, it was exactly the same. Even though it's run by blacks, primarily uh, black patronship, it was the same. And that's really what the society is all about now here in the USA. There's no difference. There's no difference. Quite a different tone. Sharpton and others are attacking me because I am a threat to them. They have failed, failed to deal effectively with problems in the black community, and they make a lot of money by promoting racial division. Huffing indignant, Sharpton wrapped up his assault on me this way. We don't just want to single out one person, but we do want to set the record straight. And we're not going to allow them to decide the conversation that we're going to have in this country. So who's we, Al? Who's we? Who's them? Talking Points believes the day of the race hustlers is coming to an end. This we and them business gets the country nowhere. Fair-minded Americans well understand there are severe problems in the black community that have to be solved. And it will take honest, courageous people to do that. One of those honest people, CNN anchor Don Lemon, who referenced my talking points on his program.
He's got a point. In fact, he's got more than a point. Bill? Raised without much structure, young black men often reject education and gravitate towards the street culture, drugs, hustling, gangs. Nobody forces them to do that. Again, it is a personal decision. He is right about that, too. But in my estimation, he doesn't go far enough. Mr. Lemon then went on to list things that African Americans should do to combat social problems. After his remarks, Mr. Lemon was predictably attacked by the race hustlers. But his courage stands in stark contrast to their ignorance and corruption. As for Al Sharpton, we will leave with him saying this. Is Bill O'Reilly saying George Zimmerman shot Trayvon Martin because Trayvon was born out of wedlock, even though he wasn't? That's ridiculous, right? Ridiculous? You bet, Al. Your day is done. And that's a memo. Now for the top story tonight, reaction joining us from Baltimore, Dr. Ben Carson, author of the book, America the Beautiful, Rediscovering What Made This Nation Great. So I think the tide may be turning against the Sharptons and the race hustlers in general. Do you agree, doctor? Well, I certainly hope so. And I want to take this opportunity to thank you for speaking out and uh, not being intimidated by the PC police uh, who think that just because you're white, you can't talk about what's going on in the black community. We have to recognize that we're all in the same boat in this country. And if part of the boat sinks, the rest of it goes down too. And for every one of those young people that we can keep from going down that path of self-destruction, that's one less person that we have to be afraid of or protect our families from, one less person that we have to pay for in the penal system or the welfare system, one more tax-paying productive member of society who may discover a new energy source or the cure for cancer. We can't afford to throw any of those people away, particularly during this time when we only produce 70,000 engineers a year and China produces 400,000. We have to start thinking collectively as a society and, and forget about all of these uh, silly divisions. And also, you know, I think it's uh, tremendous that, that you and some other people are starting to talk about the, the dissolution of the family, uh, you know, in, in all communities, but particularly uh, in the black community. And of course that's detrimental. Of course you know, it's leading people into places where they shouldn't be because they're not getting that solid foundation and that anchor that they need. They're not getting the values that are so important. Okay, for but, but what you have here is you have two forces at work. You have, uh, the, you call them the PC. I think it's much more than that. You have an industry that makes a lot of money off the racial division. All right, you have the race hustlers, the people who want to divide and keep people angry. That's what you saw in the Trayvon Martin, George Martin, uh, Zimmerman case. It became a race thing. Black men hunted. Black men uh, were the White society is contempt uh, for black men. Bop, bop, bop. Divide, 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 divide. Big money in that. Lecture fees. Sharpton's got a TV show. Uh, all kinds of stuff. And then there's the entertainment industry that puts out this vile stuff, all right, where unsupervised children, black, white, all colors, okay, they absorb this stuff. They think it's cool. They think it's neat. So they go out. So it's a one-two punch, and it's powerful. And, and for me to stand up, for Mr. Lemon to stand up, for you to stand up, we're still standing up against people who will do anything to keep their money flowing and to keep their power intact. So it's a pretty brutal fight. Yes, it is. But we have to continue to to help people to understand what's going on. You know, this is part of a larger secular progressive movement that loves to divide people, divide and conquer. This is part of Saul Alinsky's whole plan for changing a society. And don't let any situation or any crisis go by without finding a way to exploit it, to keep people at each other's throats so they don't really see what the real problems are that are going on. We need to be using all of that energy to figure out how do we improve the situation. We need those young ladies in the black community to understand that all of those babies being born out of wedlock are much more likely to grow up in poverty and that they themselves are much less likely to finish their education. The reason that that it was illegal to educate and particularly teach slaves to read is because they knew that an educated person is a liberated person. We need to start focusing on those things and forget about these artificial divisive things 
that are used I only to empower happens, people. Doctor, but there's an awful lot of money for the forces of darkness, and that's really what this thing is all about. We'll continue uh, talking to you, Doctor, and we appreciate you coming on.